In this video, we will look at some of the things that you can do with the 3D model that was created in the previous video. While we do not cover the specifics of each method, it will give you some idea of what the purpose of creating 3D models is. Since we mostly work with rock art, this video will centre heavily on this, but the methods we employ can be used on any type of 3D model. This video is not intended to be a tutorial of how to use these techniques, but rather just to show the possible uses for models that you have created. One of the best things that comes from having a 3D model is the ability to relight and move the created models. There are several softwares that enable you to do this, but the one that we use most is MeshLab. To move and change the direction of the light in MeshLab, you hold Ctrl, Shift and drag the light around with the left mouse button. Combined with the ability to zoom and rotate the model, which can be achieved with the left mouse button to rotate, centre mouse button to pan around the scene and the mouse wheel to zoom, this allows you to see objects in ways that are not possible in the real world and which can help with analysis. MeshLab also has a bunch of shaders and filters which can help with analysis. Of note is the Radiant Shading Scaler, which enhances the depiction of shapes on the mesh. To use this, with the 3D model loaded, go to Render, Shaders, Radiant Scaling. You can then set the intensity of the shader for the desired effect. We have been working on a number of ways to utilise the digital elevation maps from MetaShape to create visualisations of the surfaces that we collect. Our favourite so far has been creating digital rubbings. We process the DEM in ArcGIS and it becomes a 2D scaled representation of the surface that we have captured in 3D. This is extremely helpful for analysis as it's helped us find a large number of new carvings. The resulting images are much easier to handle and distribute than 3D models, although both should ideally be used together. We can also use this 2D image as a texture on the 3D surface to make a better visual presentation. It is entirely possible to make a digital RTI from an SFM model. To do this, you need to render frames in the same way that you would take the photographs, i.e. with a shiny sphere, a static camera and moving lights. These images can then be taken into RTI Builder and processed in exactly the same way as previously described. The result is a perfectly lit model. There are a number of platforms that you can use to present your 3D models to the public. The most popular of these is Sketchfab. Sketchfab lets you upload your models, give them some information, annotate the images and also switch between different textures. The major downside of Sketchfab is the cost and the rather severe limitations in file size. However, it does provide a large, engaged audience for 3D models. It is also an excellent resource for finding 3D models from museums and projects. One of the easiest ways to distribute 3D models to someone who may not have access or may not wish to download and learn new software is via PDF. 3D PDFs can be exported from Agisoft natively and can be viewed using the most basic version of Adobe Acrobat. The controls are fairly intuitive and most people are familiar with opening and using PDFs. The main downside is that you may need to go through a few steps before you can view the model, which can be confusing, and that the file sizes tend to be quite large. In this video, we have looked at various methods of using and distributing the models that you have made in MetaShape. These include relighting in MeshLab, creating digital rubbings in ArcGIS, virtual RTI, and distribution via Sketchfab and PDFs.